Hi everyone, it's Monday, June 22nd, 2020. Last night, Stargirl was on TV. Today I'm going to do the review. I know, I'm ahead of things. Well, that's not quite true. I've got another Last of Us video, and if I made that first, it would be five in a row. And so I really needed to break it up with something. Stargirl! Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with my Stargirl Season 1, Episode 6 review that nobody's watching <laughs> at all. After episode three, everyone dropped off. Clearly not getting into the show. Well, I'll tell you what. After one minute and 14 seconds of this episode, I was done. I was done. And then it played out. I let it play out for a little bit longer. I did actually take a break then. And it was still stupid. And then it went, da 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 star girl to Batwoman's music. And um, then it had an absolutely fantastic scene. And then there was some goofy stuff, some bad stuff. And then there was some good stuff. And there was some good stuff. And then there was some good stuff. So I thought, after 1 minute 14, I was done. I was really probably done. But this ended up being not a bad episode. Not a bad episode. I know that seems like faint praise, but we'll get into it. So, oh my god. So it starts off, right? <laughs> it's the American football team. And I'm just like, oh my god. The linebacker is going to be a fucking girl, isn't it? It's going to be a girl. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, God. And then he goes, 224. And I'm just like, oh, thank God, it's a dude. So he passes the uh, puck to the um, to the, to the quarter mister. And then uh, everyone's getting blocked. Hey, look at that. It's me. It's me. Uh, everyone's getting blocked, and then the quarter mister decides, I'm going to run for a touchdown instead. And then, guess what? They take their head off, and it's a goal! And I was like, I'm done. I'm f I'm done. <laughs> hey, look. Let's, let's do something. Let's do something. Hey, Siri. How many females have played on NFL teams? Here are the standings for the NFL from last season. If you would like, I can also give you more information about a specific team. No. No. First place I know they did. The oh, shut up, Siri. Right, Sir Siri. Siri, shut up. Okay, that didn't go how I intended it to go. Um, but I'm going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to say none. I'm going to say none. Probably in college football, none. Going to go out on a limb and say none. But uh, Artemis Fowl, or whatever she's called, uh, she's uh, part of Young Justice, or Young Injustice, whichever one she wants to play with. Uh, she's another bow and arrow person. Um... She's the bestest ever at the American footballs. And so she punches this guy in the face because he tackled her late. And then her parents, who are watching, uh, are just like, Hey, coach, what are you doing? And he throws her off the team and he puts her onto the bench. And then they're just like, hmm. We look like bad people. So they meet the coach, <laughs> predictably, in the car park after school. I'm sure there are no cameras or anything on them, but however. And they're just like, hey, that's our daughter. And he's just like, hey, don't threaten me. 
And they're just like, okay, we're going to kill you. And then they kill him. And I'm just like, oh my god, it's a CW show. It's just devolved into a shitty, shitty CW crap. And I was, I was ready for the, the off. Done. Dusted. Thank you. I will pick up my check. I will... Uh, not go past go and I will not collect another $200. So I'm kind of done. And then it starts with Courtney clambering into her bedroom. And guess who's waiting for her? It's Patsy. And uh, the staff's just like, oh shit, we got rumbled, bitch. And hides under the bed. And Courtney's just like, hi. And Pat has placed all of the JSA remaining stuff on the bed. And is like, Courtney, what is this? And she's like, uh, nothing. And it's just like, these are very dangerous artifacts. That lantern could kill you. She's like, really? And it's like, well, you need the ring. Oh my God, the green lantern ring to go with it. But yeah. And uh, he's just like, what's going on? And he's just like, look, I know, and I really did enjoy what he said here. He's like, look, I, I know you've got no respect for me. And I'm just like, holy shit. This series is actually aware that Courtney's being a right precocious brat. And he's like, uh, you need to get your stuff back that you've given to your friends. And she's like, ah. Uh... And he's really disappointed in her. And he's, and he's, yeah, I just love the way he ended that scene. He was just like, you don't, just don't get it. You just don't get it, you know. And uh, he's taking them away. There you go, the Green London battery. <sighs> damn, son, damn. So anyway, he finds the book of his buddy Rex Tyler, who was the original Hour Man. And uh, he knows what's going on with the... Uh, hourglass and stuff. So, we then cut to the scene with Icicle. This was another great little scene. And when I see scenes like this, I'm just like... <sighs> Luke Wilson and this guy are fucking phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal in their roles. And they carry the show. And when they were pretty much out of the picture last week, the show suffered massively for it. Massively. With the, the justice shitty society trying to run things. So Icicle has a dream, wakes up, instinctively puts his arm out to his wife, who we know died many years ago of the big C. And he just looks so heartbroken. That she's not there. And you feel for this person. Here's one for you, Cuckman. I feel more empathy and sympathy for this villain who killed a bunch of people than I ever would for your shitty Abby Smash crap. Because they've written him well. And he didn't kill Joel. So he's got this really pained look on his face. And you believe it. And it's kind of heartbreaking. So he, he gets uh, a message saying that we're ready to tap the... Um, we're ready to steal the launch codes or whatever. I don't know. And uh, it lingers on the picture of him and his kid and his wife. And he leaves the house and his son comes out. He's like, Dad, Dad, where are you going? And he's just like... Uh, I just got to start early. Uh, go back to bed, son. And his, and his kid's just like, you know what today is? And he's kind of like... So you know it's got something to do with the wife. Well, his wife, his deceased wife, his mum. Uh, which it goes into later in another great scene. So uh, we get Icicle. And uh, he's told the two people to meet up. Uh, with him because uh, they're burying the body of the coach that they killed 
And he's just like, can you just stop killing people? It's kind of getting ridiculous to replace this guy now. But I'm going to need you tonight. Get your suits ready. So they're like, ooh, okie chokey. And this turns out to be Tigress. And this turns out to be Sportsmaster. Her costume needs work. I'm not going to lie. I thought this guy was going to be the goofiest of goofballs. He turned out to be fucking awesome. <laughs> but we'll get into that later. Because we've got, unfortunately, some crap to deal with first. Oh, God. Fucking hell. It's mama, I was making myself a pop of the volcano. It's a gonna gush of chocolate everywhere, just like I was gushing back in 52 when I was smashing up Boosie. <sighs> what is this thing? What is it? What is this? <sighs> so he's got a school project, he's made a volcano full of chocolate. He's made a huge mess with like, but it, it did say with the leftover Halloween candy. So at least it paid the Halloween episode off. There is some good writing here. It's just not really with the Justice Society. Um, and he's just like, hey, I don't want you to come. I don't want my parents coming. I don't want them, you know, stepping on my cool. So they're like, okay, whatever, whatever. So, uh, he's not called Rex, is he? Mr. Tyler, <laughs> our man, is walking to school. And uh, Luke, Pat, whatever you want to call him. Luke in real life, Pat in the show, is waiting for him. And he's like, hey, look, I knew your real dad. Uh, get in my car and suck my car. No, uh, <sighs> didn't say that. He said, I got candy, get in my car, suck my car. So he said, get him, get him a car and I'll, I need to take you somewhere. So uh, he's like, I'm really angsty. Can you tell by the look of my face? So Courtney realizes that she's got to tell everyone that they've got to give their costumes back. Because Pat is mad with her for hiring uh, JSA members without his say-so, without anything whatsoever. And Yolande starts going into how wonderful... Uh, life is again since she's become wildcat and courtney doesn't have the uh balls to ask for it back so she's like okay oh my god fuck this guy Fuck this character, Jesus Christ. This dickhead is wearing the goggles in the library, talking to it like it's a proper human being. It's AI. She looks like she needs to go into a room with a lot of rubber sides. She looks like a ridiculous person okay oh my god so talks to her about books and then she's like hi look at my t-shirt look at my don't hate t-shirt look at how we keep putting these subliminal little messages into the show like how i keep standing by the diversity sign all the time and now i've got don't hate we's a preaching because Courtney, by the way, who's never shown any interest in anything political whatsoever throughout any of the episodes, woke up that morning and thought, hmm, what should I wear for school? Oh, I know. I'm going to put on that really inclusive fucking t-shirt that I got. I know you could be saying to yourself, as it's not a big deal. I know it's not a big deal. I know it's not, but it's dumb, stupid. 
if it was part of the character, you can understand. But this is just, we're going to put our little, like, messages in there. And hopefully people see our little messages. So she's like, hey, retard. Oh, fuck, I knew I, I, knew I was going to say it. Can I have my goggles back? And she's like, uh, well, she doesn't actually. She doesn't have the heart to because she's like, oh, my God, she's nuts. I gave the goggles to a crazy person. So she leaves her to be crazy and talk to the goggles. So Luke says, ah, ha, ha, ha. See, I didn't really want you to... Me to so, f forget that. Boobs. And um, he says, oi, I know that you've got the Iron Man... Iron Man. <laughs> our Man. Uh, hourglass. Because you punched the shit out of this. And he's like, yeah, well, my, uh, my uncle's a jerk. And he's like... Rex knew how to use his ability and temper his ability and control it and not use it for hissy fits, but to use it for good. And this guy says, have you seen the one singular expression that I've done for two episodes now? I'm moody. And he's like... Yeah. Anyway, I've got a book that your dad wrote. Why don't you have a little look at it? So he's like, really? So he has a little look in it. And he's just like, that's cool. Um, that's nice. So Courtney turns up to the special Olympic table. And they're like, oh, my God. Have you got a mission for us? We're so excited to be part of the JSA. And she's like, no, I need you to give me back my shit. And they're like, no. Excuse me? No? Uh, no, I like being Wildcat. No, I like being a fucking mentalist who talks to goggles. Uh, and Courtney's not like, they're mine. You can't have them. They're just like, no, we're not giving you them. We're keeping them. See us. Okay. So um, our heroes are selfish. Are selfish and greedy. Because, oh, God. Anyway, moving on. So I'm like, fucking hell. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. He's reading the book and he's just like, hey, this stuff that's in the book isn't real, isn't actually true. My dad wasn't born here, he didn't do this. So they realise that the book is actually code. And he says, can you decipher the code? He's like, no, no. And he's like, okay, well, um, you're going to have to give me the book and you're going to have to give me the hourglass. And he's like, uh, no, the book is my dad's, so it belongs to me. And the hourglass was my dad's, so it belongs to me. And I'm like... This is the only one of them that actually has a legitimate point. They were his fathers. So technically, he could inherit them. Whereas the other two people simply were given theirs and had no relation to the respective people. So I can't really argue with this, uh, with this guy wanting to keep his stuff because it's kind of his stuff. So Luke's just like, well, technically you're right. Um, so we have uh, mother and father uh, watching Artemis. And there's a new coach. And uh, this guy actually is called the Gambler. And he just like throws a bag of nuts on the floor because he's a villain. And then I thought, uh, no, he is. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, just a little slime ball. That is something he'd do. Okay. So he says, right, you need to meet us here or whatever because we're doing this mission. We need to uh, get the codes and use the codes, download the codes. And then they say, oi, fat slug, we like our school spirit. Pick up the nuts you dropped. So he does and he drops them in the bin. All nice and sarcastic like. But it was like kind of, yeah, these two people are not really kind of there. And it's fine. So um, the fair's here. And fucking pizza, my meatball. I ain't got a volcano. 
is doing his volcano and he's looking around and he's seeing all the families and he's just like, why did I tell my family to piss off? But Amy Smart turns up and she's just like, oh my God, let's have a look at your volcano. And then it erupts. And then she goes, that looks really tasty. And I thought, oh my God, this is turning into a porno. A stepmother porno. Thankfully, it didn't, and they just ate cake. But there was some real suggestive stuff said there, and I got really awkward. I felt really embarrassed. So Courtney's like, guys, give me the stuff. And they're like, no. And then this guy turns up, and he's just like, hey, um, uh, I know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. What's going on? Uh, and then they, they find out about the gambler because of the glasses. The goggles say, hey, I've located the gambler. He's nearby, and he's going to do something bad, and he's just a little fatso. So they're all like, oh, okay. Well, if this guy's just a little fatso, this looks like an easy target. Come on. Let's take him down. The four of us can take him down. Let's take, you know, someone who doesn't look like a threat. <sighs> I mean, they might look like a fucking dickhead, but they don't look like a threat. So Courtney's like, oh, okay, fine, but... We need to keep our secret identities, so we're going to costume up. So, uh, they costume, they, they get their costumes. And I'm just kind of like, these people are all stupid and, and silly. And if they take down the gambler, I'm going to be so pissed off. So anyway, Artemis's parents say, hey, love, we're going out for a date tonight. And she goes, you never go out for dates. And they're like, well, tonight we're going out for a date. We'll be back before midnight. Do your crunches, do your pull-ups, do your press-ups, do everything. So we then get to another really good scene between Icicle and his son. And the waitress says, hey, I happen to overhear you saying that it's somebody's birthday. So I went and got you a slice of cake, which is the lucky boy. And uh, the guy says, it was, it's my mother's birthday. And she's like, oh. And then he says, was my wife's birthday. And she went, oh, oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't. Uh, realize, uh, do you want me to take it away? And, and he's just like, no, no, no. It was it was a really uh, kind thought. And she's like, okay, I'm really sorry. And then she walks away. And I'm like, damn, this guy is so good. You can see how he could easily fit in. And you can see that this guy has depth. He's not just a Machiavellian villain. He's got layers to him. No pun intended because of the cake. He's actually got layers to him. And you can see that he is a believer in whatever he's doing, whatever Third Reich type of shite they're up to. This guy is a true believer in, in what he's doing. And this was just another nice little scene between father and son. And I think when the son blows out the candle, there's a little bit of icicle in his breath. So I hope they don't off the older Justice Society and, and fill it with a bunch of Injustice Society, young Injustice Society members, because that would be horrible. Uh, so uh, they go home and they're eating cake. Moving on. <laughs> Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> they do, they look, her costume makes Wildcat look like Catwoman, for fuck's sake. So uh, they turn up at this place. Our man turns his thing around. Our glass. And he's just like, I'll punch in the front door. And they're just like, don't do that. You'll set off all the alarms. So this... Fucking... 
this thing just recites what the goggles tell her. She's nothing. She is nothing. Everything is the goggles. This is not a character. This isn't a character. Oh, God. So they, she uses the goggles, and the goggle works out the code, and they get in. Uh, the gambler thinks he hears a noise, so he gets his little pea shooter out. The gun. And uh, he, uh, he thinks it's uh, something, so he goes outside his door. It's his cat. So these guys are just like, right, we're gonna... There's kitty, 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 kitty. Let's split up, split up and do... Uh, let's find out where he is. And then, da da, Sportsmaster and uh, Jaguar, <laughs> Tigress, turn up. <laughs> she needs something. It's so obvious who she is. She needs a proper domino mask or something. I know this might be. This might um, be relatively specific to how it used to be. I'm not sure because I'm not massively up on my Injustice Society or JSA. Uh, but just for aesthetic purposes, she needed a better disguise on her face. A domino mask would have sufficed. And then uh, sports master, whatever, he looks great. <laughs> he looks he looks kind of good. And I thought he might be goofy, but no, he's actually pretty, pretty interesting. So our man's just like, screw these bitches. I'm going to punch the shit out of them. And they just, uh, sports guy just takes him to town. Just keeps whacking these uh, baseballs into him. Uh, smacks the living shit out of him. They're totally outclassed. They're dog shit. And it's great. It's great that they are. Four of them, two of these, and they're, these two villains are taking them apart with ease. It's almost as if they're playing with them for sport. No pun intended. But they are absolutely taking the piss. One on one, uh, this guy take, totally takes out our man. No problem whatsoever. Then Stargirl comes in and he's just like, oh, Stargirl's going to start winning the day. And she does okay to start with. And then he's just like, okay, maybe take this one just a, a little bit serious. Uh, see the stump person's uh, abs. <laughs> And then he does take her a little bit more seriously and then kicks the shit out of her. Uh, she has to save our man again. Um, Tigress is just playing with Wildcat. This useless bint uh, hits her with a um, fire extinguisher to break him apart. And then they scramble away. Gambler gets his um, codes. They... Uh, Stick a bomb on the staff. The staff goes up into the air, explodes, come down, and then reignites. And Courtney's like, phew. So, there's four of them. And they're like, come on. And there's two of the villains. And the villains are like, this is not a problem. <laughs> Instead of running, they're like, nah. We're going to take you on. So, they start coming in. And then there's a huge behind. And it's Pat. So now we've got the four of them plus this massive robot, which they clearly don't know about. So they're like, okay, we're getting out of here. So they make their retreat. They go back to Pat's garage, lick their wounds because they lost everything. And Courtney's just like, hey, Pat, look, I'm telling them to do things. I had a plan formulated. They didn't listen to the plan at all. Nobody's listening to me whatsoever. They're going to get themselves hurt. They're... And then she realizes that's everything that Pat has been saying to her. And she's like, oh. Oh. I'm so sorry. And he's like, hmm. You're going to get yourself killed. So it was like a nice, a nice realization on what's going on. And uh, you kind of uh, think that Pat's going to be treated a little bit more seriously now going forward. Uh, and uh, yes, the, the Justice Society have a little meeting at the end. And they're just like, who were they? We killed the Justice Society. The Injustice Society, I should say. We killed the Justice Society. So he said, let's find out.
So they're now going to try and find out their identities. And I believe next week is the first part of a two-parter. So I don't know whether to leave both parts and then watch both parts together um, or do it individually. I'll make a determination at a later date. So it started off ropey. There's some really good scenes with Pat in it and Icicle. These guys are incredible. I still don't know what the sun is. Uh, Amy Smart is still not being utilized particularly at all. It was glad. To, it was good to see the JSA completely out of their depth and getting uh, smashed to pieces. And um, yeah, it was after last week's uh, horrible episode. This was much, much better. So six, six and a half. Six, six and a half. It was like better, but there's still you know plenty of stuff where it's not kind of working. Um, but much better episode. So hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and YouTube for live streaming. Links are in the description box down below. I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.